tonight. Welcome to the Jonathan Ross Show. We've got something for everyone tonight. We've guests from the world of science, acting, comedy and Olympic diving. So let's see who's in the green room. He's Britain's favourite way of gloom. <laughs> Jack D is here, ladies and gentlemen. I'm always happy when Jack's on the show. We're also joined by one of the best actresses in the world. Start of Smash It Drama's Brawl Church and the accused, the very funny Rev, the fantastic peep show. We have got the one and only Olivia Coleman with us, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. We also have the man who has collided more large hadrons than anyone else I know. He's the sexy scientist, he's the buff buff, and it's Professor Brian Cox, ladies and gentlemen. Start of Splash, an actual Olympic medalist. Our very own Tom Daly is in the green room. Hello, Tom. I Hi. imagine just a nice, quiet week for you this week. Yeah, it's been pretty quiet. Yeah. We got nothing to talk about. <laughs> Tom Daly is on the show, and we have great music from the fantastic Ellie Goulding. <laughs> OK, so that's the show. Before we get to that, I want to share this with you, because David Cameron has been in China on a trade delegation this week promoting our interests abroad. He's probably selling them Birmingham or something. Now, <laughs> he's obviously been to a lot of banquets, and because he's a respectful fellow, he has no doubt eaten everything that's been put in front of him, because if you're in China, that's the respectful thing to do, OK, no matter how strange it is to us. Apparently, he's had not one, but two portions of tropical stink horn. <laughs> tropical stink horn. If Glade bought that out as a plug-in, I don't think they'd sell me. <laughs> I didn't know what a tropical stink horn was, so uh, we, we found a photograph. This is, apparently it's a mushroom. This is what it looks like. <laughs> now, come on, you're better than that. Right? <laughs> How hungry was the first person who said they'd try eating one of those, you think? <laughs> uh, now, the thing about tropical stink horn is that it is a well-known Chinese aphrodisiac. It's been likened to, like, a natural Viagra, and he's eaten it twice in one day. <laughs> Sam Cam wasn't out there with him. Right? So I think that explains this picture. <laughs> I'm feeling something. And then this picture later on. <laughs> Daddy like. <laughs> and then certainly this one. Look at that. Mmm, <laughs> baby. That's him. <laughs> Shall we get my first guest out, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> he's been a British sporting hero for over a decade. He's still only 19. We've all admired what he's done for this country. But this week he put a film on YouTube talking about himself to end speculation and to actually, well, to be honest and open with us about something which must have taken an enormous amount of courage. So please, just make him feel extra specially welcome, will you? It's Mr Tom Daly, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Well, that was a lovely and very warm welcome, as I yes. hope you... Uh, Thank you, you guys. Okay. <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot of warmth, a lot of love in the room. Well, let's deal with this, the big revelation this week. Yes. Uh, who would have thought it, ladies and gentlemen? Splash has a second series. That's, uh... <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's crazy, I know. <laughs> what a thing. What a thing to have to announce. I know, I know. <laughs> uh, we're going to talk about this a bit first, before we talk about other issues, because let's talk about this. So let's get the TV stuff out of the way. Yes. Because there is another series of Splash after Christmas, uh, and the last one was a huge success. Were yeah. you surprised at how popular it was? Well, I mean, it started off a little bit shaky. People had mixed opinions about it, but I had so much fun. And if someone was to tell me, like, ten years ago, when I started diving, there was going to be a Saturday night TV show about diving. I'd have been like, yeah, right. But I mean, it's, it kind of took off. The ratings kind of spoke from themselves and it got more and more. So yeah, it was great. And uh, we have to announce, I, mean, I know you can't say uh, which celebrities are taking part in this series, but uh, I believe there's someone close to my, my life involved in this. Yes, I believe your brother is taking part. My brother year. Paul is yeah. going to be... Uh, <laughs> and you've worked with... Oh, <laughs> You think that's bad? You shouldn't see me in a pair of trunks. Um, <laughs> uh, but, you know, years ago, he did, uh, there was a celebrity uh, kind of a charity singing thing over on BBC um, for Comic Relief, and he did that. And I was watching it home with my daughter, and she turned to me quite seriously. She was about eight, and she said, he's brought shame on the whole family. <laughs> so what? He's gonna be, how is he doing, though? How is he? Has he got, is he brave? He's doing really well. I mean, obviously, when you think that you're going to be OK going up onto a 10-metre board, and people think, yeah, yeah, you'll be fine. And when they get up there, 
they soon change their mind. But I mean, he's, he's doing really well and he's working on a little something special, but I mean, wow. yeah, it's going to be good. On the last series, of course, you had Joey Essex on, yes, who did. is currently out in the jungle, yeah. doing great and winning new fans, and, but he's kind of, people like him because he sometimes says, you know, silly, unsophisticated things. Yes. He had some moment with you, didn't he, last, on, the, on the last show? Yeah, when I took him up onto 10 metre, for example, I said, oh, welcome to like, my second home, this is where I do my... He was like, what, you live here? And he, he, <laughs> gen he genuinely thought that I actually, this was my second home, I spent all my he time He was looking there. around for the bed, wasn't he? I know, he yeah. was. <laughs> I can't wait to see it. And it starts, when does it start? Uh, January 4th is the first episode, so yeah. Okay, and then uh, early next year, of course, you're going to start training in earnest again, I guess. You've got the Commonwealth Games coming up. There's something else before that, isn't there? Yeah, well, I'm training uh, full-time now. I mean, it's, it's always tough, the year after the Olympics, with motivation, because, you mean, it's like you have that massive high of winning Olympic medal in front of a home crowd. Yeah. It was, the, wow. the Olympics last year was just insane. Uh, so training this year, is, it's been tough because you've got another four years to go. But I'm working hard and making sure that I can get to the Commonwealth Games next year in the best shape I possibly can. We've got the uh, national championships in February, uh, so just working towards them at the moment. You said, uh, you know, the home crowd for the Olympics um, here in London was incredible. Yeah. And obviously everyone was so excited. And you, and you did fabulous. I, you know, you, you, you won a medal for us. I know it wasn't necessarily the one you were after, yeah. but you got an Olympic medal. That's incredible. You're hoping the support will be there for you uh, in 2016. I suspect you'll find more than ever before. Um, <laughs> and you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Which brings us to the announcement you made this week, the film you put on YouTube, which yes. was... Uh, to tell us about the, the thought process leading up to that. Why on YouTube? Why now? Well, to be honest, it was a terrifying decision to make. I didn't know what the reaction was going to be like. I didn't know how it was going to go. But I just felt like I needed to say something. I, I mean, there was rumours, there was speculation and all that kind of stuff. And I just wanted to be able to say something in my own words from my heart because I, I didn't know what else to do. And I didn't want to be like, caught on the back foot like, of anything. I wanted to be able to be honest and open about my life. And obviously some parts of my life are private. Not very many, I'll give you that. <laughs> but I mean, it, I felt like I had to say something. And I, right now I couldn't be happier. I mean, the support and the reaction has just been amazing. And it's because I had, it could go one of two ways, I mean, uh, but everyone's been so supportive and like, like, just have to like thank everyone for being well, so supportive. Well, I, I don't think... <laughs> Love you I too. Don't, I don't think it was anyone who, whose opinion you would respect who didn't uh, see what you were talking about uh, and, and the way in which you you did that without feeling just nothing but warmth and support for you and admiring <coughs> your honesty as well. Uh, to an extent, I suppose, you were cornered into it, though, were you not uh, in that the papers were speculating and they were asking you questions and that um, uh, when you tried to be kind of not vague so much but not specific about it, yeah. and of course you have every right to be private about it, that could have been interpreted as you being ashamed or you lying and I guess you had to make sure that wasn't the case. Yeah, exactly. I was, because uh, people always say, well, uh, why did, like, he have a girlfriend last year? And I was like, well, because I had a girlfriend last year. And it wasn't until spring this year, like I say in the video, it kind of came upon me. I was like, okay, wow, I didn't, I didn't expect it. And it happened, and, and I was just like, okay, everything just kind of clicked, everything felt right. He really does make me feel safe, happy, and to be honest, uh, right now I couldn't be happier. You said you were surprised. In the film, you said you were surprised. Were you surprised by the fact that, that this was a guy you were falling for, or were you surprised by the depth of the feeling or the strength of the feeling you felt? What, what was it that surprised you? It was the fact that I was falling for a guy, and it happened so quickly. I had never... I mean, I thought I'd really liked someone before, um, but I'd never felt the feeling of love, and it happened. And I was just, like, completely overwhelmed by it, like, to the point where I just... I, I like, can't get him out of my head all the time. And it's... I mean, it's... I know, no, it's kind of sound really soft, but it's true, and it, I've never had it before where, like, I love someone and they love me just as much as I love them, because I'm used to, I, believe it or not, I'm always used to rejection when it comes to girls and dates. Honestly, seriously. And now, now I don't know if I believe you no, anymore. No, 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 <laughs> serious, honestly, but, yeah, I've never been in a position before where I felt so happy and, yeah, in So love. this is really the first time you've, you've fallen in love? Yeah, this definitely is the first. I mean, I thought I'd felt feelings like it before, but I mean, this kind of way surpasses all of it, and it's, yeah, Nothing crazy. compares. Nothing compares. Wow, isn't that lovely, <laughs> Lola Devon? Um...
You must feel a degree of relief, I would have thought, the fact that you don't have to even think about people <clears throat> asking you anymore. Exactly. There's, there's all, it was all the time, like, when I was doing interviews with sport, when I was doing interviews with whatever interview I was doing, it was always, are you in a relationship, who are you dating, you've got a girlfriend, okay. all that kind of stuff. And it, it felt like it was my dirty little secret. <laughs> I mean, it was one of those things that it felt like I was, ha like, I had chains wrapped around me. I couldn't say anything. I couldn't be who I wanted to be. I felt so alone and trapped um, in who I was and just telling one person made me feel like so much better. Like the first person I told uh, was my friend Sophie um, and it, it, just telling one person was just, it just took such a weight off my shoulders to be able to talk about it with someone. You know you mentioned the thing as well, you mentioned your father and people said to you what would your father have made of this yeah. and I guess that, you know, we, we talked about this when you were on my show last time about the tragic loss of your father so young in your life. Uh, it would have been nice to be able to tell this of course but he seemed like he was a very chilled guy anyway, I got the feeling from you. I mean, my dad was always a joker, without a doubt. Uh, it's quite funny. All my family on my dad's side, they're kind of like the practical joking type. And I mean, they've got banter. As soon as I, like, literally, the first thing, I, when I went into my Uncle Jamie's house, I walked in and the first thing he said to me, so would you, would you like a cup of tea? So I was like, yeah, sure, let's have a cup of tea. He was like, how'd you take it? <laughs> and I was like... <laughs> So he, he, he hadn't seen the clip? <laughs> no, no. And this was the day before, because like, I had to tell everyone on the Sunday before, like, before I recorded the clip, and I was just like, OK, wow, OK, now I'm going to have to go and say something. But he always, they, my family have always got that sense of humour, and they're all so supportive of me, and I couldn't, I couldn't ask for anything more. I mean, the incredible thing is, it's very unusual um, for someone who is a sports person in the prime of their career to have the courage to come out. I mean, normally, you know, there are people, but and this is not me in any way uh, being uh, as kind of dismissive of them or trying to undermine them, but sometimes it's normally near the end of their career that people say, OK, by the way, I need to say this about myself as well. Yeah. But for you to say it at the very beginning, really, or the early stage of your career, I think that's what's impressive. Like I say in the video, I've always wanted to be honest about everything. I mean, I may have been vague because I, I wasn't necessarily comfortable, like, talking about uh, that kind of I stuff. I guess you weren't necessarily certain. What, exactly. What, yeah. Like, when, you, when you're growing up, you may always have those kind of thoughts, but you think, no, it can't be right. I felt like I was, there was something wrong with me. I didn't know, I didn't know other people out there felt that way. I didn't know it was uh, something that people, like, do. I just literally thought, I felt so alone, and I felt so like locked away I like, felt like I couldn't say anything I couldn't be who I wanted to be and like from Monday I felt like I could just be myself and there'll be many young people young men and women watching who maybe are in that situation mm. in the situation you were in before you had, what would you say to them just even if you're just able to tell one person if you're able to tell your story and say how you feel then I've had people that have um, sent me messages on Facebook and on Twitter and they said that they've, they've actually managed to be able to tell their parents today because they felt like they could and they felt like they had some hope and it wasn't like everyone had to kind of hide away from it and no one has to kind of be ashamed of it. And to be honest, like, I couldn't be happier. I mean, it shouldn't matter who I'm dating uh, but uh, in this day and age, but people want to know and I feel like if you've got something to say about something, then you can tell someone and just be who you want to be. Uh, that's inspirational, and that is why I think you've become, I mean, you already were to an extent, but you've become very much a role model. A very, and you, whether you're aware of this or not, I think you will find that you have become a very important figure to a lot of people. Um, let me ask you one thing, that you know you were talking about, you know, the shock you felt, the surprise at falling in love. Can I ask you, was it a sort of love at first sight sort of thing? It, it really was a love at first sight. I mean, I'd, I'd never felt anything like it before. I, I hadn't even talked to him, and I was just like, Okay, wow, okay. Sizzle. I, yeah, I, I, didn't, I didn't know, I was like, okay, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know if he, if he was gay or, or whatever. I was just like, okay. And so who made the first move? Actually, it was at the end of the night, I, we hadn't even talked, and uh, I don't normally do this. This is how it went. But I, I wrote in his notes uh, with my number, and I put, call me with a wink face. Uh, and then I had a text in the morning and I was like, oh, I can't believe I just did that, you know, like, I, I didn't realise I'd done it, I was like, oh so my god. So the wink god. face was you saying more than just, hey, enjoy chatting yeah, with you, it was call. like, yeah. are you interested, because yeah. I'm interested? Yeah, it was one of those, and yeah, ever since it's kind of gone from there. And, wow. Yeah. I guess some people might say, oh, well, he's in love now, and maybe he won't focus as much on diving, but you're saying really that in a way it's going to enable you to focus even more. I it has made... It, 
He was what saved me from not wanting to dive anymore. Wow. So you were thinking about stopping? After the Olympics, everyone ha if you ask any athlete, everyone feels down in the dumps about it because it's such a hard way to get back into it. But meeting someone, uh, it, he, just, he just gave that extra motivation and, and made me think there's, like, yeah. And he just made me work so hard and just, like, it was, yeah, it, he's just exactly what I need. I think we've all just fallen in love with him, to be honest with you. <laughs> He sounds great. Honestly, he, re he really is, and I hope everyone can. I hope everyone is so like as supportive. Once again, I I, I think I, I speak more or less for everyone here when I say um, how proud we are of you. Which might sound weird, and I hope it doesn't. But we're we're proud of you. Thank you. So thank you. Stand by, gentlemen. And Tom. We'll be helping us out at the end of the show. Uh, it's going to be dangerous, but, uh, you know, we'll see if we can find a spare set of goggles for you. <laughs> After the break, I'll be joined by BAFTA-winning actress Olivia Coleman, scientist Professor Brian Cox will be here, and everyone's favourite sourpuss, Jack D. so don't go away. <laughs>